Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Everywhere Book Fest. We are the middle grade lunch bunch. Yay! And we are so excited to be here. We hope that some of you kids at home have brought your lunches to join us because we will be sharing our characters' lunches and learning more about them and about our stories. But first, we're going to start with some quick introductions, and I'll go ahead and start. My name is May Respicio, and I wrote this book, The House That Lou Built, and I also wrote this book, Any Day With You. And this comes out on May the 5th, which Debbie is your launch date as well. Um, so Any Day With You is all about uh, this 12 year old girl, her name is Kaya. And Kaya is a maker kid. Her hobby is making films and doing special effects makeup. And she has this very special person in her life. It's her 90 year old great grandpa and they call him Tatang. And he is awesome. Tatang wears Hawaiian shirts and <laughs> he surfs and he's 90. Um, so he's quite a character. And one day he turns Kaya's whole summer, actually her whole life, her whole world upside down when he announces that he is returning to his homeland of the Philippines permanently. And so Kaya doesn't want him to go. And so she and her friends who are in um, a summer arts camp, they decide to make a movie that's all about um, the Filipino creatures and folklore that Datung loves telling stories about. And they enter it into this big contest. And if they win the contest, they think that that's going to stop their or her great grandpa from saying goodbye. So that's any day with you. Jessica, you're up. Hi. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Kim and I am the author of Stand Up Yumi Chung. My debut novel just came out a few weeks ago yay, and it's about the and it's about an 11 year old girl named Yumi and she's a, a little bit shy and maybe even a little awkward, but her real passion in life, the thing she loves the most is comedy. The only problem is her parents are not into it. They would prefer that Yumi spend her time studying for the big test she has coming up that's going to qualify her for this scholarship to her fancy private school. And so readers, you get to come on this journey, um, a really fun, fast-paced adventure journey of how Yumi stumbles into this web of lies and accidentally steals someone's identity at a comedy camp run by her YouTube idol and um, how she meets friends and how she accidentally kind of gets twisted in this a uh, whole little uh, scheme. Um, so that's uh, Stand Up Yumi Chang, and um, I hope you enjoy it. Hey, and that's out right now, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm Debbie Michiko Florence. I'm the author of Keep It Together, Keiko Carter, which comes out on May 5th. May and I share a book birthday. We're book twins. <laughs> And uh, this is a middle grade novel about Keiko Carter, who is 12 years old and excited to start seventh grade with her two best friends at her side, Audrey Lassiter and Jenna Sakai, until Audrey decides that the three of them should get their first boyfriends all in time for fall ball. And that causes a fallout between Jenna and Audrey. And so Keiko's doing everything she can to try and keep it all together and keep the peace. All at the same time, she's kind of dealing with a little family strife at home and also maybe a first crush of her own. Um, hey, you know what I just realized? That all three of our books are set in Southern California. Oh, Woo! that's right! Yay! That's I grew up in uh, Los Angeles and at a time where there was quite a large Japanese American population. And uh, in middle school particular, we had this big like Japanese American pride. We used to put Japanese flag stickers on our notebooks and wear shirts with Japanese sayings on it. And so at that time, I didn't really think too much about being Japanese American. It, it was just, it just was. And so in that way, when I write my stories um, about Japanese American characters, um, even though their race is hugely important to who they are and how they interact with their family and their friends, um, most of my stories center on friendships or family or uh, romance. <laughs> so I'm curious um, about both of you um, if, and how you live in, oh, you know, we forgot to say where we're from. Well, I'm in Mystic, Connecticut right now, but I did grow up in California. But I'm curious about um, your backgrounds. Uh, if you lived in Southern California, how that affects you as Asian American writers and um, your books and your characters. 
Well, I can go. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm zooming from the Bay Area in California, and I am a total California girl. I was born and raised in Northern California, and then spent most uh, or a huge chunk of my adulthood in Los Angeles, where I worked. Um, I worked in the film industry, and I worked at UCLA, and my kids were born and raised there. Um, and we used to live in walking distance to the beach, which is totally the setting of this book. I threw in all those details. So, you know, for kids watching at home who love to write, um, when I'm writing setting, I think about the sights and the sounds and the smells of a place. But most of all, I think about how a place makes me feel. And I try to, I try to put all of that into this book. Um, and so Los Angeles, yeah, it's a huge home of my heart for me. And I'm just going to throw it all in there. I also <laughs> edited this book called Filipinos in Los Angeles that talks about um, migration patterns to Southern California and has really cool pictures as old as the early 1900s. Um, so yeah, LA has a really is, is a place of my heart and it's definitely reflected in any day with you. Nice. That's incredible because my book is actually set in Los Angeles. And so we <laughs> all have a lot of LA vibes. <laughs> yeah, we have taco trucks and we have, like, nice. the, you know, it's, it's actually set in Koreatown, Los Angeles. And this story is really special to me because like Yumi, um, I am a second generation American, which means my parents immigrated in the 1970s from South Korea. And I would, me and my sisters, we were born here. And so uh, we very much uh, kind of have two cultures. One culture um, that we learned from our parents, um, from the motherland, and then one that we picked up just being regular American kids. And so I kind of felt like when I was looking at bookstores or books in the bookstore at the library, there weren't enough stories about kids like me who kind of have, um, or kind of in between two cultures or share both cultures. And so a lot of this story is about Yumi kind of uh, reconciling the values of uh, both of those influences in her life. So yeah, definitely. I, I lived in Los Angeles um, uh, during my teaching years after college. I grew up a little bit about an hour outside of LA, but my grandmother lived in Koreatown. And uh, so every other weekend we would be there uh, together uh, doing all our grocery shopping and whatnot. So um, Koreatown and Los Angeles is a huge um, character in my book because uh, I really wanted um, to write about a place that was going through a lot of change and Koreatown is going through a massive change with all the mm -hmm. gentrification and all the new businesses coming in and all the outside money and so uh, it's kind of at, at a crossroads of something bigger coming and that's kind of where Yumi's at too so it's kind of fun to reflect that both in the setting and in the character. Very cool. I wish I was in Koreatown right now eating a wonderful Korean oh, meal. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm in San Diego now, but we come up pretty often. Yeah. Nice. Well, now that we're talking about food. Yay, yes, nice that's segue. a great segue. And I'm going to start my timer because I'm going first. So what is in our characters' lunch boxes? Here is Kaya's lunch, although I think that's backwards on your No, it's, no, it's okay. perfect. Yeah. So let's, let's check out Kaya's lunch box. Let's see what she likes to eat. Oh. <laughs> Scene one, take one. So... <laughs> Uh, in Any Day With You, Kaya and her friends, they make this movie and they, they make a lot of it during their lunch breaks. So she's always got stuff like this in her backpack because they need this to make her movie. Um, so that's a little thing. But is there any food? Let's find out. <laughs> Kaya's sketchbook. So Kaya, I mean, she's a huge maker kid and when I was a kid growing up, I was the same way. My two sons now, they, they love having an idea and then seeing it come to life. And Kaya is exactly that way. So let's see what's in her sketchbook. She's got, um, oh, wow. Filipino Ooh. vampire lady. Oh, that's cool. Scary. <laughs> so this book is all about, um, there's a, a theme going through of Tatang tells all of his Filipino folklore. Um, and so this one is, they move, make their movie about the Bakunawa, which actually exists in a few different cultures. Um, in Filipino culture, it's a sea serpent dragon who eats all of the suns and moons. And that's the reason for an eclipse. 
Um, and so this book, Kaya's story takes place a few years ago when the eclipse happened. Um, and so their movie is all about this, this sea serpent creature. So she's got, um, she loves drawing mermaids and sea creatures. Um, awesome. So, and you know, for me as a writer, I always carry a sketchbook around. I've, it's in my purse or in my fanny pack. And whenever I have ideas that come to mind, I just jot them down. Um, or I journal about my day and it's a wonderful way to just kind of brainstorm and to, to look back and find wonderful things to write about. So she's always got her sketchbook on her. Um, oh, food. It's a banana gram. <laughs> yes. Love you bunches, Kaya. Love mom. This Aww. might have been inspired by my own mom life because I love banana grams. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got a banana. She needed something somewhat healthy. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's the good stuff. This is her first. What is that? Let's oh. find out. She's got her IKEA fork that her mom packs for her. <laughs> okay. okay. It's rice. Yum! <laughs> Yay! And there would Yay be dried rice. fish in here, but you know, we're in the quarantine right now and <laughs> I just haven't been to the grocery store. So let me tell you a little bit, a story about this is, um, you know, obviously this book deals with intergenerational themes and it's very loosely inspired by my childhood. My maternal grandparents lived with my family growing up. They were a huge influence on me. I love them dearly. Um, and they were a big part of my life. And so when I was around Kaya's age, I don't know, maybe sixth grade, seventh grade, um, my grandma, my Lola, would pack me dried fish and rice in my lunch. And I hated it. <laughs> I, I, mean, I love eating dried fish and rice with a little patis, which is um, sort of like a, a fish sauce and tomatoes. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And I loved that as a kid, but I didn't want that in my lunch. I was so embarrassed. All I wanted was a bologna sandwich. Um, but you know, Lola would stick this in my lunch. But here's the difference. With Kaya, she is like, oh my God, fish and rice, my favorite. And she offers it to her friends and she gobbles it up. Um, it doesn't phase her. She's, she's a little different than I was growing up. Um, her She's, she doesn't go through the issue of sort of straddling two worlds. And that's largely because of her really wonderful family who gives her a lot of grounding. Um, her parents are very, and her great grandpa, they're all very conscious of making sure that she and her brother and sister know their family's history and their family's stories and the sacrifices that her great grandpa made. Um, there's another theme in the book about her great grandpa who was um, in the war. He was part of the Bataan Bata death march in World War II, um, actually similar to my grandfather. And so we learn a little bit about his immigration history throughout the book. And um, you know what I really wanted to explore is how do our family's stories take root? And what does that do to us? You know, how does that shape our lens? How does that help us look at the world? How does that affect the choices we make? Um, and so for Kaya, you know, she's got a really strong grounding in her cultural background. So she loves having fish and rice <laughs> in her lunch. So did you guys ever pack, I mean, when you're growing up, have lunch or, you know, rice and like Asian foods in your lunch? I remember spam sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yum. <laughs> yes. I remember my grandma would cut the uh, hot dog this way. Yes. And make it into lunch meat when yes. we ran out. I was mortified. <laughs> but I do think our kids' generation is much more um, open minded and their friends don't tease them the same way that we, it's just not as much of a, a thing as it was back then. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this my I mean, my first book was more about, you know, what's it like to sort of go back and forth between two cultures and, and live with both. But this is just an everyday story where she just happens to be Filipina going through her 12 year old things. So and I love that about the book. Um, I'm checking my time. And OK, here is the last thing. Da, 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 da. Ooh, what is woo. it? Is that a cupcake? It looks, it looks like a <laughs> dessert. So again, I did not have the ingredients. I was going to make babinka, which is a sweet rice cake 
wrapped in banana leaves, but I don't know where to find banana leaves right now. So <laughs> pretend that this is an ube cupcake, um, okay. which is not a, tra- it's not a traditional Filipino dessert, but ube is, which is a Filipino sweet purple yam that's used in a lot of desserts. Um, and I would just want to quickly end on a, a passage in the book. Okay. Sorry, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> we lay out our, so the scene is that Kaya and her friends are at lunchtime sharing food and about to make their movie. We lay out our snacks to share and I unpack a purple cupcake from my lunch bag, ube flavored, Filipino purple yam that uncle baked. He wants to add Filipino flavors to more desserts and I love this one the most. He says ube is sweet, rich and unique, a little like our family. So I I think that really speaks to the heart of this book. It's all about family and friendship and change and resiliency, which is something that the entire world is going through right now. Um, And I've been fortunate to hear from a lot of educators who um, really champion Kaya's story and are um, recommending it as a story for these times because it shows you, you know, what you learn from others and how that makes you stronger and how you can stay true to yourself in that way. So that is Any Day With You, and I hope you will check it out on May the 5th. Yay! Thank Yay. you, May. It looks Thank, thank you. you. So I don't remember who's next. Is Oh, I think Jessica, Jessica is I next. believe it's yes. me. <laughs> All right, who's ready to go into Yumi's backpack? Oh, me. me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here's Yumi's backpack. It's kind of sad because my book takes place in the summer where you probably would assume you wouldn't need one, but her mom forces her to go to this um, Korean tutoring center to get her ready for her test prep. It's like a cram school. And so she's got to carry her backpack all through the summer. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> She just wanted to sit on the couch and watch YouTube, but it turns out she's studying. Oh, let me get through. So like Kaya, Yumi also has a, a notebook. Um, this is not her real notebook. This is my child's notebook, but uh, she has a notebook and she calls it her super secret comedy notebook. And actually um, in the book, the, the actual book, there's little excerpts of it. So you can see it'll have like her handwriting and, it, and her little doodles and her little, the spiral on top. And um, it's basically where Yumi writes all her jokes and all her ideas uh, for the comedy bits that she's going to do in her future stand-up comedy show that she has in her mind. So um, here's a notebook. And then, of course, since she's going to this Hagwan, this Korean test prep center, she's got her her books, her boring books that she's got to get through. (laughs) She's got to get a 98th percent on her exam to win that scholarship. So that's basically... Uh, a bummer. Oh, what's this? Yumi, why are you carrying a <laughs> microphone in your backpack? <laughs> Yumi is a so obsessed with comedy. She's always thinking about her next bit, and she watches these YouTube shows with her uh, idol, Jasmine Jasper, who's always giving tips on how to improve. And so sometimes she records herself on her laptop telling jokes as if she's in a comedy club. And she watches it over and over and (laughs) writes down things she needs to improve. So that's how passionate she is about comedy. All right. I think I see a lunch in here. Da-da-da! New Year's Lunchbox. (laughs) Much like Kaya, she has some traditional things in her lunch, too. Oh! And just like Kaya, mom, she has a mom. And it says... Study hard, you mean <laughs> you can do it. I don't know if you can see that. And it says fighting. <laughs> it's kind of like a co-opted phrase that Koreans use to say like, yay, to kind of cheer someone on. Um, so her parents are very uh, giving her a lot of pressure to do well on this exam. And you can see that in that note. All right. What do we have here? So in uh, her mom packs her like a little bento box every morning. And she wakes up extra early so that she, so that her daughter can have a hot lunch. Um, But kind of like what we're talking about, uh, Yumi would much rather just have like a taco from the taco truck. (laughs) (laughs) So what do we have in here? We've got some rice, we've got some edamame, cherry tomatoes, we've got a yogurt drink. Those are the best. We've got a little orange and some dried seaweed here. So nice. while this is a nutritious and lovely lunch, I think sometimes we just want something, you know, like what everyone else is eating. And she's got 
her little BTS. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that. Love she's got her chopsticks and her spoon in here, all lovingly packed by mom. So interesting thing is um, in the beginning of the story, Yumi and her mom are a little bit more um, kind of having a hard time understanding each other. I think in the beginning, Yumi just wishes her parents would just be normal, like be like the rest of my kids' parents and, and why don't they accept me and my comedy? Why are they pushing me to be X, Y, and Z? And so in the beginning, I think these lunches are more of a burden, like, mm. but then at, through the course of their journey, as um, they kind of come into conflict together, I think by the end, she realizes that her, this is her mom's way of showing love to her. And while it doesn't look the same necessarily as the way the other kids' moms at school show their love, like it's not a whole lot of hugs and I love you, I love yous, but it's a lot of like sacrifice and a lot of like attentiveness and, and that's her love language. And so I think that's kind of a fun way to um, see how Yumi and her mom kind of get closer and kind of how Yumi accepts both parts of her identity in a way, you know, um, with her Korean side and American side. Um, so the last thing Yumi snuck in her backpack. What is this, Yumi? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Giant bag of Cheetos, hot Cheetos. Yumi is them. awesome. <laughs> yeah, Yumi's right? awesome, and Yumi loves uh, flaming hot Cheetos. They're her favorite, favorite snack. And um, in fact, her catchphrase is "Holy hot Cheetos," <laughs> <laughs> and that's something she says anytime she feels kind of flustered or whatever. So. As you can see, I hope um, you get a little glimpse of who Yumi is, and hopefully if you haven't already, check out the book. Uh, it's kind of hard to get to a bookstore these days, but um, a lot of indie bookstores are shipping for free, and it just came Our out local of Local deliveries. Yes, so yes. please check it out. Yes. All right, Yay. Debbie. Oh, okay, so got we're gonna check out what Keiko has in her lunch. So Keiko has shoved her lunch in her backpack. Cute very similar to the backpack on the cover. Shout out to <laughs> Stephanie Yang, who's a book designer over at Scholastic. Love her, cover, love her. So, so let's cute. see what Keiko has in her lunch today. So she has, we were talking about rice. She has omusubi, oh, which yeah. I used to call oh a Japanese sandwich, but also is good. a rice ball. So um, it looks like, so Keiko is hafu. And that means she's half Japanese American on her mom's side and she's half Caucasian on her dad's side, just like my daughter. And she, uh, Keiko really embraces her Japanese side. So dad, before the story has started, um, bought a Japanese cookbook and worked his way through all the recipes. Awesome. And that made um, her mom really happy and made the family really happy. So usually Keiko will buy her lunch at the cafeteria. But it looks like dad has made her lunch today for her because he's made her a musubi. And it's just basically uh, steamed Japanese rice shaped in a, a, a ball or a roll. And uh, sometimes there's something yummy on the inside. My favorite thing is umeboshi, which is Japanese pickled plum, which is very sour, but I love it. And then it's wrapped with nori or seaweed so you can hold on to it and not get rice all over your fingers. So that's what... Uh, Keiko has as her sandwich. I got rice on my finger as her sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, rice is a really big deal. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know about you all, but I had rice with every meal growing up and yeah. I didn't know it wasn't normal for people to have spaghetti with pasta, spaghetti sauce, and rice. And rice. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it took a while for me to figure that out. <laughs> all right, let's see what else she has in here. So you have to have a drink. And it looks like oh. Keiko today has bubble tea, which you can also call boba tea, pearl tea. What do you call it? Boba. We call it boba, yeah. Do you? Boba. So is, is that a West Coast thing? I, I feel like it is. So. Yeah. 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 so I lived on the, on the West Coast and now I'm East Coast. So I, I call it bubble tea, boba tea, whatever. But it is a, a Taiwanese tea drink. It was invented in Taiwan in the 1980s, but uh, the popularity has exploded all over. It's very popular in Japan. Keiko loves bubble tea. So a bubble tea place has opened up near their house and she asks her best friend, Audrey, can we go check it out? And Audrey's reaction is no way. And she says, those bubble tea balls are like chewing snot. Oh, and oh no. So they don't go, and, and Keiko's really bummed. But the thing is, so it's, it's tea, sweetened tea with these tapioca balls, and they are chewy, and that's why they have this 
big fat straw so you can sip the tea and also get the tapioca balls and chew it. It's kind of fun. I like it. What's your favorite flavor? Bubble tea, boba tea. Light to green tea. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yummy. Yeah, mine's passion fruit, and that's also, of course, Keiko's favorite. <laughs> Yumi's favorite right. is taro also. <laughs> uh, yummy. All right, what else is in here? Oh, because you have to have dessert. Yes. Yo! <laughs> so Keiko loves chocolate. She is a huge fan of chocolate. She eats chocolate throughout the entire book. Fair warning, you might want to have some chocolate near you while you're reading the book. Uh, she doesn't have a favorite chocolate because her goal is to try every single chocolate out there. Wow. And um, she does mention a couple. She loves Cho Chocolate, which is a San Francisco-based chocolate company. Mm. And she also loves Lake Champlain Chocolate, which is Vermont-based. And she loves the dark chocolate maple caramel flavors. Um, and also she loves Pocky Sticks, which uh, I grew up eating. They're uh, the Japanese, like, crackers or cookies dipped in frosting. And this particular one is chocolate, which is Keiko's favorite, but you can also get vanilla dipped or matcha dipped or um, strawberry dipped. Green tea. Green tea, yes, oh, yum. So those are really yummy. And uh, Keiko is a big fan of chocolate. What were your characters, what do you think your character's favorite chocolate would be? Well, let me just say, I feel like our three characters would be Wonderful friends. Yes. <laughs> Based on their eating habits. Totally alone. <laughs> and they would have delicious meals together. And my and Kaya is like me. She would eat any chocolate. She would just scarf it down. Yeah, Yumi's <laughs> quite a good eater as well. <laughs> <laughs> so they would all enjoy hanging out and eating chocolate together. All right. I think there's one more thing in her lunch bag here. But it's not food. It's a picture of a dog because oh. it's so loves dogs. She absolutely loves dogs. She has pictures of dogs in her locker, at home, obviously in her backpack. And so here's the thing. So her best friend, one of her best friends, Audrey, has an older brother named Connor. He's a year older. And they all used to hang out and be friends, but they had a falling out. And they do not like Connor. And Connor isn't very nice to them. He calls them names. But Connor has a dog. And he adopted a stray black lab dog mix that he calls Lumpy. <laughs> and Keiko loves Lumpy and she loves to hang out at the house and pet Lumpy and hang out with Lumpy. So um, I don't know if you're a dog lover, if you love chocolate, if you're a fan of bubble tea, if you like stories about changing friendships, because middle school is that time when, you know, friends start changing, they might like new things or have different passions or you might meet, meet new friends. So it's, it's a time of a lot of changes. So if you like stories about that, or maybe if you like stories about romance or first crush, um, I hope you'll pick up Keep It Together, Kate Carter. Oh, and there's chocolate on the back of the cover, oh. too. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Well, it's so fun looking at everyone's lunch boxes. I feel like I know all the characters just a little bit better, right? Yeah. Yeah, I wanna, definitely. I want to eat lunch with all of them. <laughs> I know. I wish we could all get together and eat lunch together and talk about our books some more. Someday soon. We can Someday do a Zoom soon. lunch bunch. How's that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Zoom lunch bunch. And I hope all of you out there were eating lunch with us. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know it's kind of a difficult time where we can't necessarily get together, but I'm so thankful that we have this platform and um, this festival that uh, we can learn about all the new books that are coming out. And I really hope that if uh, any of them interested you today, that you could go check them out at your uh, local indie bookstore. And hopefully when the libraries open back up, it would be great if you can uh, take a peek. Yep. So thank, thank you. you to, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much thank for you coming. Thank you, Everywhere Book Festival. Thank you, Everywhere, thank you, everywhere Book Festival. Bye. Bye. See you later.